Hey, posing gloves here. I am wearing a hat, and today we are going to be looking at pulse width modulation with FM synthesis. So the reason this is is not all oscillators have the most capable functions, and some of them deliberately don't. For example, Monarch does not have pulse width modulation, but they offer a method to do pulse width modulation. So I'm actually going to show you another method that involves no FM, but hopefully this will make FM synthesis make way more sense to you because I'm going to show you a way to deduce this that is, I think, really a really cool experiment that I encourage you to do on your own as well. And so let me really quick just show you the dilemma, right? So I'm using Monarch. Monarch is trying to basically be a mini Moog. And in its design, well, in Monarch's design, they have omitted the inclusion of a pulse width modulator. So like you cannot change the duty cycle of a pulse, which would look like this. Right, so we're changing the pulse width. Now over here, it's like, ah, oh, there's there's no way to do that. So what, what do they suggest to do? Well, they suggest this method. They say, hey, take a saw wave and an inverted saw wave. So we have two inverted saw waves and they're both going out of our mixer. And because they sum together, they will form a pulse. Then by changing the pitch of one of them, you will cause a phase shift. And because they are changing the way they sum, you will therefore change the width of this pulse. So let's go ahead and see that. You see, now right now it's pretty slow. I can augment this by just changing the tuning. Now, as I play higher notes, it'll get faster because the ratio changes and all that good stuff. So, okay, that's really cool. Is there an alternative method? Because I was looking at this, I'm like, that's kind of cool, but there's got to be another way. And the answer is frequency modulation. So, and this is the method I, I was using. I was like, oh, there's, a, there's another way to do this. Pretty cool. So the way this works is you have... To, you need something that's got just two lines. There can't be any curve. It's got to be just an angle. And then over here, you need to have your pulse width. You can even choose different duty cycles of it, but basically just your pulse width. And what we want to be able to do is control the length of this pulse width. We're going to use do this using FM and just showing you, I'll explain all this stuff and how to do it in just a sec as I play it. See, we get a very similar effect and right now it's been linked because it's, the oscillator 3 is being key tracked so we could keep it as a consistent rate even though we're getting higher notes or we could turn it off but then we get a very it's a very different game we're playing when we turn that off but it's a similar principle at work so it's important that a ratio is maintained which in an fm synth that would happen by default because you're using the ratio unless you decide to use the hertz value offset which i mean you could if you want and so uh, the other thing is when you use this method, you, anything with just an angle will work. And the same thing applies with the pitch. So I could change the pitch and augment the speed at which this happens. So, okay, that's pretty cool. So let's talk about how do you deduce this? So let's just go over a couple basics. So here I've got Citrus and it's putting out a sine wave. And before I get too far into this, turn that like uber down because I want to be able to see it but not hear necessarily everything we're about to experience. So what I have here is a sine wave and we know that if we if we turn on frequency modulation that frequency modulation works by deducing basically the rate of change. So here we've got a lot of change, right? It's, it's, well, in this case, it's closer to a line, but once we get to this curve, there is a lot of change. Your line is curving and that means lots of change. So it's like not so much change, lots and lots and lots and lots of change, not so much, not so much, lots and lots and lots and lots. So as we turn on the FM synthesizer, as we FM one by operator two, we will see that these rates of change can be visually seen in the waveform and they will clump together. So as I move it, you will see that they sort of, they form this where there's, oh, obviously less change and then lots and lots and lots of change, less change. And so that's what's going on here, right? So it's pretty easy to see. Now, instead of changing the FM amount, let's change the operator. So let's change operator two, um, which is the modulator. And as we change it, we're gonna get to a line. Now lines don't have lots of change, right? There's no curve. So it's just straight line. No change, no change, no change. But then we have a, an angle here. So it's going, oh, change, change right here. And then it's going to go up a straight line again. And when we change the angle, we're going to change the way this process happens. So at first it'll smooth out. This will actually get smoother. And then it will begin to clump together into bases of change. And so as we look at this, check it out. 
And so you see, because it's it's like no change, no change, no change. There's only two moments where there's really any change going on. So it almost disappears from our signal, which is pretty interesting. Now, let's go ahead and continue on our path. And we see that it's beginning to bunch up into changes again because our rate, our angles are changing. That's all that's happening. So it's going, oh, change, 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 and then like a line. So it's not so much change, not so much change, not so much change, but these two points are gathering our amounts of change, which cause these little packets. And as we move up, and now when we get to a line, which is just a saw wave, this looks like a saw wave too, but you got to remember this is a saw tooth wave. So it's going down and then it jumps up and goes down and jumps up and goes down. And so it actually has an, a, a straight line right there. And so it basically says instantaneous change, totally different game. So if I play it, you'll actually hear an, an occasional click from this instantaneous change. See, there's like a little bup, 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 because it's not perfect. Even digital can't do this. So like instantaneous change, like holy crap. So, but it, ideally it would just be like a line that went on um, because there'd be, the change would be happen, bam, instantly. Like faster than you could ever hear because it's instant. And so, okay, that's pretty interesting. So we get back to our, what our original wave was, like a sine wave. Now, as I keep going, we notice that we now have introduced, we still get, Let's make this a little more obvious. So we see here that we've introduced a straight line into our signal. And just going, what the heck's going on here? Well, here, we it's a line, but there's still some change. So we're augmenting this. But then all of a sudden, in the middle, it meets this immediate line of change. So it goes, whoa, instant change, keep going. Instant change, keep going. So it's going, it's trying to instantly change from negative to positive, like immediately. And it's having a hard time doing that. And so... As this goes on, it gets pretty interesting as we continue, but we've now introduced a, a straight line into our signal, basically. That's that's the takeaway. So as we come here, we see here that now we're getting pretty close to a saw wave, and the straight line is very apparent because the changes have grown farther and farther apart. As soon as we reach a square wave, it gets kind of interesting. We're back to a sine wave. Just before it, we're closer to a saw wave. You might be going, what's this? Well, this is still an angle right here, right? But as soon as we do this, this is basically saying straight line, straight line, straight line, like no change, instant change, no change. There's no angles like as far as the other, there's nothing like this hanging around, right? So there's like an angle of some degree here and an angle of the inverse of whatever that is here. The, anyways, let's sum to 360. You know what I mean? So, okay, well then what is going on here? Well, this instantaneous change is causing the same thing as our saw wave. But this one, so anything that's got just straight, just straight up lines, just bam, bam, is going to be able to do this. Um, so the saw wave and the any variation on the pulse width will work. Triangle wave offers some interesting ideas too and variations on it. But you get the idea. So we're able to introduce these sudden instantaneous changes. Now, let's take a look at our carrier wave. Our carrier wave right now has been a sine wave. But if we make it a pulse wave, all we can introduce where this straight line change happens with this straight line change. So I just went from operator one to operator two. By changing the amount of FM with this, we can change where this angle lies, right? Because that's the modulating operator. So let's go ahead and if we change the volume of two, check it out. So we are successfully augmenting it. It is straight up pulse width modulation. Like, congratulations, we've done it. And so that is how you do it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in Monarch. So that's that's how that works. So it's a pretty interesting process and it allows you to augment anything with a straight line and just move it around. So in Monarch, I was like, all right, bro dude, man dude, bro, no pulse width modulation, no problem. I can take anything I could take this wave, this wave, even this wave, because they're all, they're literally all straight lines. The only way I'd really get a sine wave out of this thing is if I did self-oscillation with the filter. But then you can't get, you can't use that as a modulation source, which is kind of a bummer. So, okay, so moving on. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a square wave and I wanna augment where the duty cycle lies. And so I'm gonna use 
a another square wave because that's just the most straightforward way to do it. And I'm simply just going to, right now it's been, there's a couple of things that are set up here. So there's key tracking, which is the same thing as a ratio. So when I hit a note, it's going to play that note as well. It's been linked to the keyboard is all you really need to think of that as. And then as I move this up and down, I'm going to mix in the FM. You can think of this as the volume of the modulating operator or, or the uh, modulation index. And so as I move it, it's going to change that and it will therefore alter it. Now, uh, something you need to keep in mind too is when we're doing things like this, we're alternating, we're moving entire harmonic spectrums around. Like it's pretty crazy. Same with this one or harmonic series, I mean. So let's go ahead and uh, do it. And because this thing's oscillating on its own and it's not totally perfect, it's gonna create some movement. But uh, if we turn off key tracking, it can stay constant. Well, it's gonna move between the two. You get what I mean. But it's gonna create that pulse width modulation effect. Now the problem with this is if I, now here's here's what you would, this is, will achieve the same result as the other one. It speeds up as we get higher and then the tuning plays a role in that. If we turn this off though, there's static relationships against a moving moving target. So it changes quite a bit. And you can change the pulse, weight, pulse widths on these. So if we like go to a shorter one, we'll change how far it goes as well versus and then of course you can do things just the angle so we could do like the sawtooths and now if we go down an octave more that's so cool so anyways those are some options i thought i'd share this with you i i think stuff like this is so cool and gnarly like it's just fun to play with and you can set up a similar thing with one we don't even have that on right now but that's just some some basics on this maybe hopefully fm maybe made a little more sense to you after the end of this i have a whole series for it if it didn't right try to break up stuff into into chunks but i thought this would be cool to share if you have any questions let me know subscribe support me on patreon so i can continue to do stuff like this and have a blessed day.